Heart to Heart, a Catholic media ministry presents Season of Joy, Reflections for the 50 Days of Easter. Today's reflection is by Father Mitch Pacwa, SJ. Father Mitch is a Jesuit priest, world-renowned lecturer, spiritual director for over 50 Holy Land pilgrimages, respected scripture scholar, published author, and the host of EWTN's television and radio shows. He is also the president and founder of Ignatius Productions, a Catholic media production apostolate. Now, let's listen to today's scripture, followed by Father Mitch's reflection. The Holy Gospel According to John Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all people, so that your Son may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belonged to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you, because the words you gave to me I have given to them, and they accepted them, and truly understood that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you have given me, because they are yours, and everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world while I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. This passage has three parts to it. First, in John 17, verses 1 to 5, Jesus asks his Father, to glorify the Son because the hour, that is the hour of his death and then resurrection, has come. And he seeks the glory that he had from before the world began. This glory was what he had left behind, as St. Paul cites in a hymn in Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10 that Christ had emptied himself of the glory of heaven and became a slave, a slave to the point of dying on a cross. But he also seeks from the Father the same glory he had from the beginning of time. So that's what he prays for here as he gives his final testimony. Then we see the second part in John 17, verses 6 to 8, when the Lord Jesus speaks about his apostles. He said, I manifested your name to the men you gave me out of the world. First, the apostles are the Father's gift to Jesus, but the gift Jesus gives to them is the name of of the Father, and that he prays for them because they are going to be in the world, and 
he also describes them as the ones to whom he gave the words that the Father had given Jesus. And that he recognizes that they know the truth that he received from the Father. Now, given that, the third part is in chapter 17, verses 9 to 11. At this point, he no longer describes them as having received his word, the word that came from the Father, but he prays for them. He's not praying for the world, but he prays for the apostles. And notice he says, you've given them to me, they're yours, but everything you give me, I give back to you, because everything that's mine is yours. This speaks to the mystery of the Trinity. The Father had given Jesus glory. He gave Jesus the apostles during the public ministry. And whatever Jesus receives from the Father, he gives back to him. This is part of the self-giving of each person of the Trinity, an eternal giving of the Father to the Son, the Son back to the Father, and that that eternal gift of self is the Holy Spirit. He is that love between them. And it's only because of this eternal self-giving and acceptance of one another that St. John was able to write in his first epistle, chapter 4, that God is love. And that this love is what we are to imitate. If we are made in the image and likeness of God, we are to give of ourselves and we are also to receive others as a gift to us. In that way, we are God's image. And then we also see that he not only had given them the Father's name, but he says to them in verse 11 that keep them in your name that you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. The name of Father is what makes it possible to keep the disciples of Christ one, even though they live in the world. And sometimes people are influenced by processes in the world to deny the name of Father, but we never do. Instead, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We hope you've enjoyed today's Season of Joy Reflection. Tune in tomorrow for the next edition in our Easter series. And if you haven't already joined our email list, visit htoh.us to sign up and receive more inspirational content delivered right to your inbox. May God bless your heart and the hearts of all your loved ones.